You just need to be confident and it's going to happen to you. Take a risk because worst case scenario, you just go back home and that's from you, where you started it. So just keep going. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Paul Tully with the FYI Podcast. We're back. We got another episode. We're in season two, and I couldn't be more excited, man. I'm here with John Mejia. Me and John have worked together. Uh, he he had come to town from Spain. We're going to get into all that, and I actually booked him in his first job. He did uh, my movie, Murder Motel. He's an incredible actor, and he has some really exciting new things going on that we're going to talk all about, so let's jump right into it. What's up, man? What's up, Paul? Oh, Dude, my gosh. Thank thanks you. for coming in, man. Thanks for doing the podcast. Thank you for having me, man. I mean, super exciting. Um, I'm super happy for you because I've seen some of, you know, your episodes. And it's so inspiring because you thanks. don't just bring actors or people that work in the industry, but you bring people who has, like... Um, amazing stories to tell right yeah and that's that's amazing so congrats thanks congrats man the project let's get into your story a little bit you're from spain yeah i'm from spain i moved to la three years ago um pursuing my my dream as an actor and um and yeah i moved yeah all the way from barcelona to los wow. angeles wow. it's been a journey for sure but um yeah, that's what we talk about, right? Like you gave me my first opportunity, my first role in a in a movie here in the states, and oh. that's always like special. So that's why for me this, this podcast is so special. Just, you, you know, you know what's funny, man? It's like so cool when you say that, and it it like feels good. Like yeah, I give you a first shot, but the reality is, you gave me and our team your first experience in showcasing your talent and you do such an incredible job in the movie man it was you, man. truly it sounds cool to be like yeah give him his first job you did us the favor man i think i've never said it in in any interview um even though i had like plenty of you know like magazines reaching out to me from spain because it's like a big deal right like a guy from spain like doing a movie with Mickey Rourke and all of this amazing cast we had, right? So they were reaching out to me, but I never talked about this before, and I think this is the perfect time. So the emotion of that audition came because three years ago when I moved here, um, obviously I had my savings and I had like some money, but LA is so expensive that doesn't matter how much money you have, you are gonna spend it all, right? So I was working as a host in this um, restaurant. When I got the audition from my old manager um, for the movie, um, I think I had just like a few days to, mm -hmm. to the tape and I wanted to prepare that audition. But as you know, the monologue, it was huge and I wanted to prepare the monologue and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I delivered the lines. It was so deep, so emotional. And so... I remember that I didn't have enough time because I was working the previous days. And this was on Sunday, I believe. And the audition was due on Monday. So I literally had one day to, to wow. the tape. And that Sunday, I had to work at the restaurant. So I called and I was like, hey, I'm not feeling OK. Um, you know, um, do you mind if I just take the day off? I need the job because I need to keep paying my bills. But at the same time, I want to do this audition. So long story short, I had this friend who told me, hey, you came to L.A. because you you, want, you wanted to become an actor, not because you wanted to work at a restaurant, right? And she was like, just do the audition, and if they fire you, we'll find another job for you. Don't worry, I got you. And I was like, oh, okay, you're right, whatever. I, uh, yeah, sure, why not? So instead of going to work, I went and I did the tape. And I felt awful. I felt that day that everything was like, you know, like so heavy. I, I, I felt this feeling inside of me of, of I just moved to another country. I'm working on a restaurant. Like I've done like 20 auditions and I haven't got 
any callback, like what's going on, maybe I'm not meant to do this, like, you know, all of the stress and the bad feelings inside of you. And I did the audition and I did only two takes. That audition, no, I think I did two takes and the one that I sent you was the first take. Wow. And it was full of emotion and it was full of like mixed feelings that I had and and I think that's why that audition was so real because I was actually having such a hard time in my life. I got fired from the job. Um, <laughs> yeah, really? so for the next few weeks, I was looking for my next gig. <laughs> and it's when I got the call from my manager and she was like, hey, congrats. No, she said, um, I just talked to one of the producers or the director, I'm not sure. And they are just asking me if you're available. And then I remember that call and she was like, they are going to confirm tomorrow, tomorrow morning. We are going to know for sure. And I was like, OK. But as soon as I hang out with her, hang up with her, I um, I started crying, man. I cried because I was like, it doesn't matter if I get the role or if I don't. But at least I know for sure that there is someone out there that like my tape. And that, you know, that was everything to me. And I started crying and I was like, okay, it was worth it. This is just a meaning that I have to keep going and I have to keep going. And and next day, pff, I got the call and I was like, wow, man. I mean, wow. Yeah. Bro, that's so that's that's so amazing, man. I, I, there's so much in that. Um, here's something I don't think I've ever told you. So I seen your date. It was literally, there was, it was hands down, you did something special. Know that in life, nothing can be taken from you that's meant for you. That's a perfect example. So look, you came here to be an actor, yeah. not to be a caterer or whatever. No, you no, came no, here no. to act. And I, I do agree with that. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's risky, but life is risky. Yep. And yeah. when you love something, you go after it, no matter what it is. If it's acting, if it's plumbing, if it's fitness, you got to go at it like a savage and get it, man. We live once and life is once. so short. Yeah, you know? and, and I think that's one of the things that we forget. Um, and I talk about, I'm talking about all these, well, people like me, immigrants who come from another country pursuing the dream, right? And once you're here and you start living here, you for, sometimes you forget this, right? You forget the reason or your goal when you move to this country or to this like city, right? And so it, that's something that we need to remember every day. I'm mm. here w for for a dream, for a goal, for whatever the reason it is and whatever your dream is. But like we're here for that, not for just survive. You know, because this city, I feel like 80% of the people are just surviving and they are just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's what I have to do. No, it's not what, I, what you have to do because otherwise I would have stayed in my country, right? Yeah. To yeah. do like whatever, I, you know. So that's how I see it, though. It's um, great advice. No, it's great advice. It's a, And uh, again, like I said, um, I mean, I think that goes for for everything. Um, definitely for your story as an you know immigrant yeah, coming yeah, yeah. here. But I mean, for any, it's like if you have your eyes set on a goal, mm -hmm. you know, if your goal is to quit smoking, or if your goal is to lose some weight, at the end of the day, you should wake up every day with that drive and a reminder. Yep. Take that first ten minutes after you wake up, you know, mm -hmm. to give some gratitude, some blessings, and then remind yourself what is my goal today. Mm -hmm. It was the same goal as yesterday, and that's to lose this ten pounds. How am I going to do it? I'm going to be in a calorie deficit. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to go exercise, whether it's ten minutes or three hours, and you will hit that goal. So, as an actor, mm -hmm. what are you here for? What are you training in? Uh, so, you just signed. With yeah. CAA. Yeah, that's great. I mean, dude, imagine this. Comes to LA, <laughs> does his first film with me, and now he's signed, not because of that, I'm saying, but because of his hard work Everything and helps. his grind. <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't want anyone to think I was tying in my film to him getting this success. But what I'm saying is that's amazing. And now he Thank signed a, the biggest agency in the world. That's incredible. I'm yeah. so proud of you, man. How, Thank you. Uh, how is that going? Is, has it, is it new? Is this a new? Yeah, it's super new. And um, I think... <sighs> 
I'm super happy and I'm super blessed and grateful. And I think that even though you think that it's not because your movie, again, is what I said, everything helps. And once I finished with, well, Replica or Murder Motel, yeah, um, I started getting into that flow of working. I was just working, 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 booking like TV shows or booking, booking like few episodes here and there yeah. and a movie a tv movie and i was just having that flow as an actor but it's what i mentioned before that i wasn't really happy like i mean obviously i was super happy working yeah. as an actor but at the same time I, I wanted something more because i feel that i'm not just an actor i i'm a creative right yeah. i'm an artist so i started to look inside of me what do i want to do and i started to create ideas and so last year, a year and a half ago, I had this idea of something pretty similar to a podcast, but it was like a talk show. Mm -hmm. And I sold it to this network. Um, and so they signed the first four episodes as a proof of concept. And we shot them and they went great. So they signed one season. We had 12 episodes. We had like many, many, many views. Um, and I was running the show. So I had zero experience doing that, but my team was so amazing and they helped me with everything that I needed. And it was actually related to coffee. So my adventure started as a producer selling a show with no experience, but making it work. You know, nice. and I was like, let's go. Because I feel like when you have passion, that's all that it matters. If you, if you have passion for something, you are always, you're always gonna find a way. And I think that you are almost the same. You're very yeah. driven and you're very like, let's do it, right? Yeah. Let's make it happen. So I'm the same way. And so I started producing. That was my first gig. That was my first project as a producer. And I started producing different films. And I was helping people like, I don't know, um, finding the money, finding the investor or finding the project or finding the actor or going on set and you know helping them with whatever they needed related to location or yeah whatever they needed like what a producer nice. does right and so i sold that tv show and now i'm working on big projects and that's what i signed with caa they are helping me to close those those but also i feel more protected because i know that they are behind me so now Every contract that I have, they are reviewing it. Nice. They are giving me a lot of advices. They are like guiding a little bit my career, not only as an actor, but also as a producer. Um, I'm developing a brand, uh, a coffee brand, because I'm very passionate about coffee. So I'm always doing stuff. I want to open an art gallery soon. So it's like, I'm just like doing, doing, doing things that like inspire me. And, and I feel like, now that I found that, I'm more picky about the auditions that I do. Sure. Because now it's not, probably you feel the same, but when you decide to become an actor, it's really hard. It's not something, it's not an easy choice because you know that you're going to be unstable, that you are not going to have, you know, constantly work, that you need to, you know, accept rejection mm -hmm. every single day, actually. Mm -hmm. And so... And I don't know you, but in my case, I had to fight against the most important people in my life, which is my family, because they didn't want me to be an actor. I, I've been working since I was 13, and they've been always very supportive. They've been always there. But because I was studying something on the side, right? I, I was studying a degree in law. So they were so happy because they were like, oh, this is just a hobby, but it's not it's not his career. He's not, never going to be just like an actor. He's going to do something on the side. And when I told my parents, like, hey, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to be an actor. They were, like, so upset and so sad. And they were like, what do you mean? Like, this is such a, like, hard, like, world that you are not going to make it. And it's not that we don't believe in you, but the industry is hard. And then when I told them, I'm moving to L.A., what do you mean you're moving to LA? That's yeah. crazy. No, no, no. You don't know anyone there. Like, like, no, no, no. But I, I was so like sure about my decision and about what I wanted to do with my life that I just knew that I had to do it because it's God, yeah. whoever it was, the universe, how, however you want to call it, was calling me. Yeah. That was my call. So I just went for it, right? 
but it was hard at the end. Now they are supporting me and they are like really happy and excited for me nice. and for every project that I'm doing. But that's what I apply now these days. If I fought against the most important people in my life to become what I am today, which is an actor, why am I gonna do the audition that my agent or manager want me to do? Or why am I gonna do a project that I don't even wanna do? Right. Like that's not gonna inspire me. Right. Like, come on, I'm not here to do what I have to do. I'm here to do what I really want to do with from my heart. I like that. So that's what I apply now, man. I'm not saying that I'm picky about the projects that I'm working or I'm not like, right. if it's not with Quentin Tarantino, I'm right. not going to work. It's not about not that, that at all. Yeah. It's just about I want to be passionate about the projects that I'm working on. What what has come up in your life? Let's talk about some times that you've hit some walls, whether it's in your career or personal life. What what you know, what what has forced you to keep doing that? I mean, you come from Spain. Yeah. You, your family didn't want you to do this. Yeah. Um uh so your your first language Portuguese. I'm no, sorry, no, 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 Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. Oh yeah, what am I talking about? Portuguese, yeah. Well, I'm a Portuguese. Uh, I'm not that educated. So Spanish, your first no language. You come over here, but when did you learn English? Did yeah, there in Spain so or when you came? That's actually one of the things, right? Like um, Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> From Portugal. Keep this clip in the podcast. That was actually hilarious. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, no, man. I mean, I think that's been one of my biggest insecurities, the language, because I'm acting and I'm also like talking in a language that it was, it's actually my third language, English. I was born with Spanish and Catalan because I'm from Catalonia, so we speak Catalan, which is like a mix of Italian, French, and Portuguese. Actually, wow. so well, maybe you were. So you I was. Were in that, I wasn't. That in, I wasn't as dumb as we thought. <laughs> a little Portuguese in there. A little. Bit, <laughs> I, yeah. I could sense it in the accent. Yeah. I'm actually very. I'm a linguistic <laughs> specialist. So <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, learning English as a third language and wanting so to. So what act. was that language first? Then Spanish. Yeah, it was Catalan. Catalan. Spanish. Spanish and then English. English. Man, and I can't so, even speak English properly. No, I you, speak three you languages. Do, you do. Yeah, but it, I was so insecure about it, right? And especially for, for my accent because I had meetings with different managers and agents and they mm. were always like, we need to get rid of your accent. And when you move here, that's the first thing that you want to do, right? Because you want to have the chances and you want to just you know, be called by the casting directors and, and working projects, TV, yeah. movies, whatever it is, right? And so I was so insecure and I spent so much money on um, action reduction and coaches and this and that. And so I remember like, like being so frustrated because uh, even though I was spending so much time and money, my accent was there. And one day I just had a switch in my brain and I was like, you know what? Instead of trying to hide my accent, first of all, I'm never gonna look like an American. You yeah. know, even if my accent is perfect, like I'm never gonna sound like a real American because I'm not from here. And a lot of actors that are not from here and they have a great accent, they still have an accent, mm. right? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stop trying to change my accent and I'm gonna actually embrace it and see what's happened. Right. Since that little thing changed in my brain, I started booking roles. Yeah. Insane. Like, I, yeah, maybe I'm not playing the, uh, the uh, American, but I'm playing the Italian. I'm playing the Spanish. I'm playing the guy from South America. I'm playing, you know. And, nice. And it's like most of those projects are, well, some of them are like, I, I booked this guest star for um, the, this soap opera, The Bolt and the Beautiful. Uh-huh. I've never expected to work there because it was like, they are so American. They are not going <laughs> to yeah. want a guy with my accent. But, hey, there was a role. They needed a guy with an Italian accent. And I was playing there and the same episode with Andrea Bocelli, you know? Wow. And I was like, look at me. <laughs> what? Know? Did you so get like, to meet Andrea Bocelli? I did or not? not because wow. they filmed some of those scenes in Italy, actually. Sure. And then, you know, wow. uh, we, we shot at the studio um, for That's a few days. That's super cool. Yeah, but How proud was, so was cool. your family about that? Oh, yeah, they were so happy and so <laughs> they proud. They were like, we told you, be an actor. <laughs> yeah. You got what it takes. <laughs> exactly. You're in Hollywood. Yeah, you're with Bocelli working. now. You're hanging yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, they know that now these days with the streamers, it's like people 
are actually craving that kind of content. People with accent, people that are more unique, right? Yeah. Like diversity, like it's not like it used to be back in the day. So yeah. that's what I feel like. I've been working with such a cool directors and people with vision and those are the people that I want to work with, right? Yeah. And again, like sometimes we feel like we have these weak points and things that, you know, and we should embrace that. Yes. Because it, I promise you that that's such a like game changer. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And everything you said is right on about your accent. That was definitely in the conversations before making the yeah. decision to cast you. And, and also, like you just said, it was also one of the sh stronger things that stood out. Yeah. It was really awesome to yeah. have, because for me, your imperfection is exactly what might elevate your life to the next level. You know, um, I, I read one time in a play, uh, uh, one of the di one of the guys says, um, "I'm not a, I'm not a perfect individual, but I'm imperfectly perfect for what this situation calls for." Wow! And that was a line in a play. Um, you know, you got a stutter, you got a limp, you got this, you're a little overweight. We spend so much time on focusing on why I'm not going to get that job, mm -hmm. why I'm not going to get that significant other, why I'm not going to get anything mm -hmm. instead of why I am going to get it, mm -hmm. you know? Wow. And, and so that's important. And uh, you're living proof of that, man. I mean, uh, in all yeah. the work that's happening for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm super happy and blessed and grateful. But again, it's everything. We always think that it's exactly what you said, that everything is from the outside, right? That the outside is the one who has to choose you. But no, it's you are the one who has to choose himself, right? And say like, no, I'm good enough. And this is who I am. And I'm sure that like I'm going to fit like maybe not here, but maybe there. Right. Yeah. And you just need to be confident and it's going to happen to you. And w when you're more confident, it's almost like people can see that they, they can smell that. Right. And yeah. I've seen many, many, many and I have many, many talented friends, actor friends that they are the best. And they always ask me, even people from here, like, wow, man, you're working more than I, than I am. And <laughs> you had the whole, like, visa issues and your accent and this, this and that. Like, how are you doing that? Like, I, and they are great actors. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I mean, I think, like, you just need to be more, you know, confident and believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, who is going to believe in yourself? Yeah. Right? I've met people that have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And it never happened. Yeah. And it still isn't happening. And you're like, oh, you're Maybe you're 30 years in, man. Yeah. And I, I don't know if, if they're still going because it's all they can do and they love it. Or at that point, is it like, what else am I going to do? Yep. And yeah. that's a real question. Now, taking ourselves out of the inspiring artists that are like, chase it and it's there. Because that's all true. But sometimes as just like the kind of man I am, I'm like, who? What if the best ever comes out of this is I live in a little studio apartment and I'm doing a community theater play for 25 people and I'm 60 and I have 30 cats and no money. <laughs> I'm like, would that make me happy? And you know, when I first started acting, I was like, yeah, because I love it. I love creating I love the acting, character. Yeah. But today... Yeah. No, <laughs> no, yeah. I really I'm no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm being honest. Yeah, for yeah. any um, agents, anything, no, absolutely not. Yeah. But with that said, that's why I go ten times harder yeah. than the guy next to me. Yep. That's yep. what I'm saying. It's yep. like I have no time to waste. Yeah. So I would say to any reps who rep me or people working with me, I am worth your investment yep. because I'm going to go so hard mm -hmm. because I'm not sitting around going mm -hmm. like I and, just and waiting it, for the opportunity exactly. to happen. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I guess that's what I was trying to get to. Like I don't anyone out there who's second guessing if they're doing what they should be doing or if they're inspired by their work. The question is. Is what you're doing fulfilling and happy? If not, great. Yeah. Go chase what's going to make you happy, but you got to chase it with yep. everything. You can't just do the minimum because the odds of you actually making a living being creative is slim to none. Yep. Is that fair to say? Super fair. Yeah. And I think also life give, gives you like a little, like, like, not advices, but these little signs when you are in the right path, right? Mm. Like going back to your question of how do I know if I'm going the right path, right? And I feel like when you're going the right path, 
like things work out for yeah. some reason. Call it luck, call it however you want to call it, but it's like, oh, okay. And you just keep going because you know that you are going in the right direction. Good point. Now, when you are not going the right in the right direction, everything is just like awful. Bad experiences, Good point. bad luck. It's like, oh my gosh. So, you know. That's a great, you just made me think of something. That's a good point, John, because I would say, and I'm not, I'm not a big successful person yet who's rich and stuff, but what I'm saying is, hey, my bills are paid and yeah. I'm being created, but yeah. I will say the times that I was even driving Lyft all night <laughs> at bottom, I was still excited to go do that reading. Wow. So I think that's what you're saying too. It's like, you know you're on the right path that yeah. even when things are not going, you're not booking mm -hmm. nothing. You're fussed because you're going to be frustrated. Yeah. But I never thought, I never thought, eh, I'm going to quit because I always was creating, whether it was a reading or, or producing a yeah, play yeah. or producing a short film, I'm always working on something. There was something that, there. There's yeah, something, something. And I'm there. like that today, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. This has been amazing. Thank Before you. we close this out, yeah. what I like to do, I like the guests to look into that camera there that's on okay. you. <laughs> and I want you to give some advice to somebody who's experiencing or, or seeing this story and they're like, man, dude, I'm really digging John's journey and his mm -hmm. story. And um, how can I pursue that? Or, or I'm feeling like I'm not enough. Remember your dream. And this is something that I said before. Remember why you're here because you don't have to be from another country. Maybe you are from another state who came to LA just to make it as an actor. Keep going, remember that. Remember how expensive life is in LA <laughs> and <laughs> keep doing that, you know? And worst case scenario, oh, I would say take a risk because worst case scenario, you just go back home and that's from you, where you started it. So just keep going. That's. That's my advice, man. I love that. I love that, man. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna close us out uh, with a little message. Hey, what's up, everybody? Paul Tully, FYI Podcast. Thanks for tuning into another episode. Sitting here with John, I got all kinds of feels, all kinds of inspiration. Uh, you know, I got to meet this young man, this talented man, when he first showed up to L.A. Uh, as you heard on the podcast, he auditioned for a film I was directing, and uh, he just knocked it out of the park. I'm so glad I took the risk and cast him. He said he had insecurities about his how he talks, his accent, all those things. We put things in our head, and we don't realize that the world, the universe, whatever you call it, they want you to succeed. We live in a time right now where we think everybody's against us, that, that the, mm -hmm. it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Sometimes it can be, but the truth is there's more people that want you to succeed. There's more people that want to succeed with you than against you. So get those blocks out of your mind. John talked about the risk he took for that audition. I love the advice his friend gave. Said, you know what? You came here to be an actor, not a caterer. Now, the reality is he had bills to pay, but he took that chance. And I'm going to say this. I don't want to tell everybody, quit your jobs and, and go. But what I am going to say is sometimes you got to risk it. You got to take a risk. You got to get out of your comfort zone. That's the whole message here. He's been out of his comfort zone since he left Spain. You got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to go get it. Go after your dreams. Go get them. They're there for you. It's your life. We all get one and we could do anything we dream to do. So let's go get it together. FYI podcast. Thanks, guys. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see your motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. I'm finding inspiration, and once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation, then you step into the world and you find your inspiration.